Welcome if you're new here. My name is Dr. Lucy and welcome back if you've been here before. In this channel, we teach you about eye diseases and eye conditions and where you can get some help. We also tell you some of the things you can do in the comfort of your home to sort out some minor eye difficulties. So be sure to subscribe so that you can alert you every time that we do upload our videos and we try to do this every single week. So let's get started. So today I'm going to explain to you three processes that lead to diabetic blindness. Of course, anyone who has diabetes is at risk of diabetic blindness, but we can delay this as long as we can. Note that about 1 in 39 people get blind from diabetes. That's translating to about 2 to 3 people in every group of 100 diabetics. In fact, it is the commonest cause of blindness in developed countries and developing countries like Kenya are soon catching up because of the changes in lifestyle and diet changes. Up to 80% of those who have had diabetes for about 20 years or more will definitely have diabetic eye changes, meaning that the longer you have the disease, the more likely you are to get the diabetic complications. These people will still end up with diabetic disease, but this can be delayed as much as is possible. But for those who are not diabetic, the thing is to avoid getting into the diabetic space. Three processes or events that lead to diabetic blindness. And the first is sustained high sugar levels. The normal being 3.5 to 6 millimoles per liter. Initially, of course, high sugar levels do not really affect vision. But these are our precursors for the damage that will come later. If sugar levels are high or low, patients will experience blood vision but this is usually temporary because as soon as the sugar levels get to normal then the vision returns to normal but this is not what i'm talking about today today i'm talking about the permanent changes that come with high sugar levels the high sugar levels interfere with the lining of the vessels making them weak making them bleed these sustained high sugar levels start a cascade of of damage to the vessels that we will see later as we go on. The second is disruption of blood vessels supplying the most sensitive parts of the eye and that is called the retina. These vessels are weakened, then they break, they swell and then they start leaking and bleeding. So at this point, if the patient presents to the eye doctor, the doctor will pick up some of these changes and treatment can be done successfully. And this is the reason that we insist on frequent checkups because if not checked, then it progresses on to the number three. And the third process is the growth of new vessels because of the damage of the old ones. Remember, the body is capable of doing this occasionally to save and salvage itself. Remember, the retina is a living tissue and it is not getting the nutrients and the oxygen that it really needs for its own metabolism. And therefore, it has to find a way to get some of these nutrients. And so what happens next is formation of new blood vessels in a bid to bring in the blood, in a bid to bring the nutrients, in a bid to bring the oxygen. Unfortunately, these new vessels are formed in a rush. They are very weak and they tend to break and bleed even more easily. So at this point, the retina then becomes weakened. Remember, it's not getting what it's supposed to get. So it gets weakened, it gets tears and gets detached from the rest of the eye. Then there is a lot of disorganization in the eye that eventually causes blindness. So these are the three key events that you need to know that will eventually cost eyesight. And that number one again is sustained eye sugar levels. Number two is disruption of the blood vessels. And number three is the growth of new vessels. So basically, those are the three key things or key processes that lead to blindness in diabetics. The unfortunate bit about this whole process is that it is painless and the patient may never really know what is happening unless the vision goes down dramatically. It may even be completely unnoticed if one eye is only affected unless someone is taking their vision, then they notice one eye is not seeing. It may be practically impossible to know that one eye is actually not seeing. Frequent eye checkups will pick this up early and this can be managed early. As you can see, the process is slow but sure. But remember, complete reversal of these complications may not really be possible unless this is detected quite early in the process. But the best way is to just make sure that these complications do not occur or are delayed as long as is possible. But how do you do this? 
So the first, of course, is to make sure the sugar levels are kept at an acceptable level. Remember, high sugar levels starts the cascade of all the events that eventually lead to diabetic eye disease. So if you keep your sugar levels below 10 millimoles per liter, if you've been diabetic, then that means this process is avoided or delayed as long as is possible. The second way, and this is also so, so crucial, is to get those frequent checkups. And for diabetics, we've talked about annual checkups. But if, of course, you have any diabetic changes already, your doctor will advise you to even have more. It could be six every six months. It could be every three months. It could be every two months. So depending on where you're at, the doctor will advise you how frequent your checkups should be. And this to make sure that the treatment is instituted at the right time before it gets to that point where you can't do anything about it. Supplements have been used and have been found to play a crucial role in preventing those destructive processes. And this could be considered your, your doctor will advise you on which ones to take and which ones will be beneficial for you. What I did not mention here is that you need to keep your blood pressure, your cholesterol under control and stop smoking if you do. So these two conditions, that is hypertension and cholesterol, together with smoking, interfere with the integrity of the blood vessels. And of course, with patients with diabetes, where diabetes also interferes with blood vessels, these become like a catalyst, making the process of the complications even faster. Finally, this exact process that is happening in the eyes will also happen in other vital structures of the body and will lead to impotence, heart disease, kidney disease, and stroke. And these tips that I've just shared with you will definitely save your vital organs. If you've not already watched our other videos, I'll put a link below so that you can go and check them out. A question for you today, when did you do your last blood sugar test levels? And this is for everybody, whether you're diabetic or non-diabetic. Let us know in the comments below. To stay up to date with our latest videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button. And until next week, goodbye and enjoy your holidays.